Every year, cyclists push the limits of what is possible on two wheels. From steep hills, sharp turns, to riding at night, 24-hour bike racing is an extremely challenging sport. How long could you go without stopping? For this challenge, we'll be putting your body and your bike to the test. Watch out, bike, 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 bike. Uh, cars, man, why? This is your body on, biking non-stop for 24 hours. Cycling is a great exercise with many benefits. It reduces stress, improves balance and coordination, and even helps you sleep better. The record for riding for 24 hours is 808.8 .8 kilometers. But we're not going to think about that. We're going for duration, not distance. What would such a long ride do to your body? Before you start cycling, it's important to stretch and warm up. This will improve your blood flow and keep your legs from tiring too quickly. The first few hours will involve a lot of hard work, heavy breathing and getting a feel for the road or the trail. Riding uphill will require more power to maintain momentum. Your heart and lungs will need to work hard to share the oxygen your muscles need. Going downhill will allow your breathing and heart rate to slow down slightly. But don't stop pedaling. That will keep the blood pumping into your legs and your liver will convert any lactic acid into glucose, giving you even more energy to burn. Okay, by this point, you've sweated out about four to eight liters of water. You'll need to replace this to keep going. Isotonic sports drinks like Gatorade have the same balance of salt and sugar as the human body. This will help you absorb fluids even faster. But don't wait until you feel thirsty before having a drink. By that point, you'll already be dehydrated. So can I get you something to drink? Okay, assuming you started at first light, it would now be early afternoon and the hottest stretch of your ride. Mentally, this is probably the most challenging part. You feel drained emotionally and physically, a state known to competitive riders as bonking. Bonk. I feel completely drained. This happens because you've depleted 80% of your glycogen stores. Your brain just wants to give up and stop. During the ride, your body will try to save up as much glycogen as it can and burn fat instead. But without a steady flow of carbohydrates, you won't be able to continue at the same pace. Try to eat an average of 30 to 60 grams of carbohydrates per hour. This is the equivalent of one to two cereal bars or bananas or one liter of a sports drink. Okay, at this point, you should have found a nice groove and a comfortable pace. But if you're not wearing padded shorts, you might have a sore butt. A good pair of cycling shorts will reduce pressure points, preventing chafing and keeping your tushy nice and comfortable. Okay, now it's the middle of the night and you have to get used to riding in the dark. Hopefully, you've equipped yourself with a good headlamp. Despite your fatigue, you'll need to be extra aware of your surroundings. Keep an eye out for potholes, bumps in the road, and wandering animals. The last thing you want to have is a crash. Injuries from a crash could include severe head trauma, concussion, or broken bones. Long distance riders are also prone to hand numbness, wrist pain, chronic pelvic pain, muscle cramps, and the list goes on. Okay, the last couple of hours will be tough and will likely hurt the most. The rising sun will give you a mental boost, signaling that the end is in sight. The entire ride, your body has been producing chemicals that block the feeling of pain. Now that you've reached the end, you might have the euphoric feeling of a runner or a biker's high. All right, just a few more pedals. That's it. You did it! But before you celebrate, be sure to stretch as your body will tighten up. All right, now that you've conquered this challenge, let's see what it would be like to run a marathon without training. Think you can handle that? 
Well, we'll find out on another episode of Your Body On.